Hello, everyone. I want to welcome you to um, another sort of episode uh, between myself, Matt Corey, and Kate uh, Schleifmein. And uh, we're, this is our second sort of round in terms of doing interviews. Now it's my turn to do an interview with Kate. Uh, it's a real pleasure. Thank you, Kate, for, uh, for agreeing to do this interview. Um, I know it must sort of feel a bit different. I, uh, my part is interesting to sort of be interviewing you for uh, regarding your book, Journey to Data Scientist, which I thoroughly enjoyed. I know that you have a lot of new uh, followers who are enjoying the book. Um, what's the reception been like so far with the book? So, for you. Yeah, thanks for asking that. So the, it's, been, it's been really good. I've gotten some really positive feedback from, you know, especially my LinkedIn network that they found use in the book. And it's really helped, especially aspiring data scientists, think through uh, if this is actually what they want to do with their career and listening to over 20 stories from other professionals that have gone through various paths to get to their role, it, it seems like it's really helped people. Good. That's good to hear. Just to give a bit of a background, um, Kate uh, works at Deloitte as a manager um, and uses uh, Tableau uh, within her work with data visualization. Um, Kate is obviously very, very passionate about uh, data science, and as, as I am as well. Uh, we come obviously from different vantage points. Um, Kate is a lot more of a sort of user of data science than, than I am, because on, on my part, I work within recruitment, specifically around data scientists, and we provide um, the, these, these individuals to companies. Um, yeah, I mean, when I read your book, I, I was quite fascinated with the fact that you did so many interviews with obviously, you know, big name companies. Uh, what sort of made, made me sort of think is, what is it that inspired you to, to actually write the book? Well, that when I was starting to think about data science, I wanted to speak to professionals that are already in the field. So I started setting up interviews and calls just to get a bit more background of you know what is the role and how do people get into that role and do they even like it and as after a couple of interviews i've decided that this is probably going to be an interesting book because i i was speaking to other professionals that are either looking into starting a career in data science or into changing a career from what they're currently doing whether it's in it or in the business so i decided that i will continue this venture of talking to data scientists and then compiling it into a book, so making it a bit more structured. Interesting. Okay, thank you. Um, so in terms of data scientists, what, what is it that you're finding that is a main challenge for them within the main... Data scientists is a fairly, fairly newish role. Um, it hasn't been in the market for that long, but obviously there's, there are challenges. And what, what, what have you sort of encountered from your sort of interactions with data scientists that you've sort of seen, and also especially within the book that you've seen as challenges for them. Right, so the challenges, most common challenges I've come across is the environment is changing so fast, right? The, the technology, the tools, there's there's a new software every time you, you try to learn something, there's always something new. So you, the technology is always five steps ahead of those that are trying to master it, which is actually the exciting part that's drawing me into this field because I love constantly learn, learning new things and just always advancing and, and, and educating myself further. But I think that is one of the challenges because people constantly have to keep on top of the technology. Another challenge is learning how to do data science before actually getting your role, like they, before getting a job as a data scientist. And you've probably faced this issue as well where your candidates are looking for a data scientist job without having the proper experience of you know hands-on projects so i think those two the ever fasting role of you know ever ever changing role of a data scientist and the exceeding growth of, of technology and keeping up with that mm. what, what do you think that um, they're doing to actually um keep up to that. I mean, in other words, keep up to being informed and, and dealing with that change. Because obviously, you know, the, the, the rate of, of, of sort of technological change is, is just is just enormous in terms of trying to keep up, as you said. But that is but how do you think they're they're coping with it? Well I think I 
think for the most part, people are doing okay. I think they try to not chase every new shiny object, as they call it, right? They try to master, let's say, you know, learning Python or learning R and getting comfortable with mm. specific programs before trying to learn something new. But it's something that, you know, you really have to keep in mind. So I think companies like Lynda.com, Coursera, U Udemy, Udacity, you know, they provide various courses that I think are very helpful for data scientists mm -hmm. to try and keep on top of all the changes. Sure, of course. No, it's, it's, that's true. It's, uh, that, obviously, that is uh, something that the market, you know, is, is there uh, for them to be trained up, which is fantastic, of course. How realistic is it? I mean, I find some people who ask occasionally, um, I, I want to be a self-starter. I want to sort of do it all, all on my own. Is that, is that really feasible? Without, without the likes of, you know, Udemy and Coursera and... I think it's feasible given uh, if, if the person is very disciplined and very passionate and excited about the space. I think it takes a very unique person to, you know, go structure yourself without a course and learn everything. I think that the data is definitely out there, right? On the internet, there is so, so many tutorials that you can look at for free, even YouTube channels such as this, where you can watch videos and learn from, from experts. And, you know, there's Kaggle competitions that you can participate in. I think it's all about being structured and disciplined. So I think it is possible that True. it's not, not, not for everyone. I think most people appreciate the structure that comes with it, of course. Thank you. Um, I'm just wondering now, as a result, I mean, what, so a data scientist comes into an organization, so, so they're, they're a new employee, they come in, what's the ideal for them coming into an organization? Well, define ideal. Well, I guess the ideal is what, what's the best sort of scenario for them coming into an organization? What, what, what do you think they are expecting from the organization when they come in? In terms of I'm talking, of course, about the data in terms of what they have to do. Okay, so I think if we take the scenario of a, a new data scientist, right, who's just maybe completed their education or online course or some some sort maybe have done a few personal projects. I think the ideal state, and obviously this will vary from, from individual to individual because people have different preferences, but I think coming in and having the right manager is very important. Somebody who is more knowledgeable than you, right? You, you should never be the smartest person in the room because then there's not much to learn. So I think having a great manager that can help guide this new data scientist, uh, provide them with the right problem sets or, you know, data sets that they need to work with. But back to the ideal, I think it varies because in some cases, the ideal situation for a person would be to come in and have all of the data structured for them, have the right problem set, you know, here are the data sources, this is how I want this to look, um, and then they're set off on their projects. But for others, I think the ideal is coming into an environment where, you know, everybody's relying on you to come in and fix fix all their issues. And in some cases that you do end up learning more when you're thrown into the water, right? To see if you can swim. So I think the idea will definitely vary based on the individual. I see, okay, right. I mean, as a result, like, I guess I'm just wondering, um, you know, as we know, the data scientist role is such that it's a, it's a hybrid role. It demands a lot in terms of having to be uh, you know, be skilled up, obviously, in terms of statistics and math, and uh, uh, having sort of uh, having that curiosity, being a good communicator. Um, all these different things are all sort of within this role. I mean, to what extent do you think communication is quite crucial um, to for that role to be successful in terms of what they're expected to do? Yeah, I think actually communication is one of the most important aspects of, of a data science or a data professional. Because, for example, if, if a data scientist, you know, really smart person can uncover some amazing insights, but is incapable of communicating these insights to the business, which leads to the business not taking action based on those insights, you know, all of that analysis and intelligence sort of goes to waste. So I think being able to communicate clearly not only what, what you've gotten out of the data, but also what your approach was and 
you know, what, what your process was. I think that's, that's key because then it allows you to have a, a conversation to, to see maybe there's another approach you could have taken. So even if you're talking, you know, a technical data scientist talking to a business leader, I think they both need to speak the same language. So I, I definitely think communication is an integral part of that process. Sure, thank you. Thank you. Um, I mean, within your book, Training to Data Scientists, I'm just wondering what, um, what do you consider as the... Oh, yes, of course, there it is, right, right. I had it next to me. Fantastic. Yeah. Um, what, what do you think as the... I mean, with, obviously, you have over 20 sort of examples um, of data scientist interviews that you, that you conducted. Um, which one sort of stands out in your mind in terms of the greatest um, contribution that the respected data scientists provided? Any anyone in particular that really really stood out for you? Yes, I, and this is just because of a personal preference. So I spoke to Diane Reynolds. She's the chief data scientist at IBM, and I I mean obviously I found all of this everybody's story fascinating and interesting, but this one really spoke to me because. It was very close to the type of work I used to do prior to getting into data. So what she did was she and her team created a tool that allows a machine to read bank regulations and help the people, the regulatory team, process the regulation and pull out key requirements that um, that they need to act on as a bank, for example. And that really spoke spoke to me because I was the person that used to read through the regulations and I had to parse them and get at all the requirements. So having a tool like this would have saved hours upon hours of parsing through hundreds of text that the regulators would provide for us to, to help other banks implement. So that, that, that one really stood out for me. Okay, fantastic. Wow. Thank you. Um, you know, obviously the data scientist role, uh, as, as we know it, was essentially a statistician in the past. And um, has evolved, and obviously we have different roles. That occasionally it could be a machine learning engineer. Obviously we have different roles, like you know, of, you know could be a data analyst, a data architect, etc. But in future, what? How do you see the role of the data scientist evolving? So I did. I did hear some thoughts on this in in the book uh, about where where is the role going, and I think what I uncovered was that we're shifting in the mindset. So I think we started out with, you know, having teams of people doing various things, like you mentioned, data analysts or mm. statisticians, engineers, and there's been kind of a divergence where the expectation is that a data scientist should have all of those components as a person, and they call it, you know, the unicorn, the data science unicorn, and everyone's looking for it, and it doesn't exist. Uh, well, I guess some people think they're unicorns, but I... From what I hear in the future, it's it's moving back to a team approach. So instead of trying to learn it all, uh, I, I was told that the, the best thing would be is to specialize into one key area and become amazing at it, and then become part of a larger data science team because that's that's kind of where the future is going. So you're sort of talking about specializing. Is that a reference to certain tools? Right, so for specializing, I mean, uh, you know, either go with either tools or pieces of the data science process, right? So you can start, there's data, you know, scraping, web scraping, APIs, there's data analysis, data exploration, data visualization. So kind of finding a niche that you're most interested in, that you're really good at, or you're passionate about, and really going... Okay, um, I guess we have one more question I want to ask you. Um, something that I think that we'll, we'll both ask quite a few times on LinkedIn, possibly every day. Um, what would you recommend uh, advice to basically uh, a newly qualified data scientist wanting to sort of break in and sort of get that first role? What would you recommend to him or her? Well, first, I'd recommend they speak to you because, I mean, you are. Wow. <laughs> so, very kind of you. Uh, but besides that, I wow. think, you know, using using your network is, is a great Thank tool you. for getting your first job. That's actually how I've gotten any of my jobs, including my first job, which is really just getting out there, shaking hands, meeting people, 
without much of an expectation, but really just trying to add value to them. And then you'll be surprised at how the universe works, that you might end up adding value to yourself in return. I think you know, keeping mm -hmm. keeping up with even LinkedIn conversations is good. It gets your name out there and it, it gets you engaged in the community. So I would definitely say, you know, that that's helped me at least. It, it helped me learn as well, because as I engage in discussions in you know, various LinkedIn threads, I learn in the process. Yeah. So yes, reach out, reach out to Matt and network. That's my advice. Okay, well, thank you. Thank you. Well, okay. Um, this, this wraps up my interview with you. Uh, it was a pleasure. Thank you so, so much for, for providing the time and your busy schedule to uh, have this interview. Thank you again. Thank uh, you. My pleasure. I want to also say again that I really enjoyed your book. And uh, again, my book's titled Journey to Data Scientist that everyone can find on Amazon, Amazon.com. Uh, on my part, I'm in the UK, so it is on Amazon.co.uk. And uh, thoroughly enjoyed it and definitely recommend it. Thank you, Matt. It's been a pleasure speaking to you. So we'll, we'll speak again soon. All right, then. Thank you so much.